Speedy B are really smashing it out the park with regards to their flight controllers right now. Today, we're going to take a look at a new flight stack from them called the Speedy B F4 version 4. Now, this is an upgraded version of the F4 series, obviously the fourth in that generation. And what we're going to do today is give you an overview of it. It's not really going to be a review more than anything. It's just going to be an overview of the stack, what's changed compared to the previous model, its specifications and features. And then at the end, I will share with you some thoughts. Now, just before we start this video, I just want to say Speedy B did provide me this flight controller sample for free. They have not, though, paid me to make this video and they have not seen this video before it's been published. Now, before we take a look at the unboxing, I just want to talk a little bit here about what you're going to be getting for your money. This is a full stack, so you're getting an F4 flight controller, 55 amp ESC, and we'll come on to the technical details of all of that in a minute. However, the real interesting point here is the price, because this kit is going to be $69.99. You're getting a full F4 base stack for under $70, and that is frankly incredible. Speedy B have really been pushing the price point on their products in recent times, and they're doing that again here with this. Okay, so to get on with it, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at what you get in the box. Now, there are a number of upgrades on this stack, and the first you'll see is this. We now have a 55 amp ESC. Now, this is also fitted with this heatsink on top as well, supports 3 to 6S, 4 in 1, 8 bit, and it is running BL Heli S. Now, then we have our flight controller over here, which is the version 4, and we'll take a closer look at that a little bit more in a minute as well. Now, like many of the recent Speedy B stacks, what we get is the stacks on the top, and then if we carefully lift them out, we will find underneath another little box with all the accessories in, and this is something that Speedy B have been doing really well with their recent stacks. We've got our cables for connecting between the two stacks as well as connecting to external devices. We've got an XT60 on a pre-soldered cable ready to attach. They've included a capacitor as well as some screws and mounting options in there as well. The capacitor they include with this is a 35 volt 1000 UF unit so that's going to be okay up to 6S no problems at all and that should offer plenty of filtering. Now, walking you through the specification, we'll start with the flight controller and then we'll come back to the ESC in a second. Now, this is based on the STM32F405, just like the previous version. Gyro-wise, though, that has changed. That's now the ICM42688P. We have a 100 UF filtering capacitor, which is a tantalum, installed on the gyro as well. That is that what you can see there. I'll probably try and get that under the microscope, actually, so you can see it a little bit easier. And that is going to help prevent any interference making it through to the gyro from its power rail. We have two BECs on board this flight controller, so we have a 5 volt BEC, which is capable of up to 3 amp. That is increased from 2 amp on the previous model, and we also have a 9 volt BEC, also capable of up to 3 amp too, again increased from 2 amp. This also fully supports iNav D-Shot, unlike the version 3. There was a quirk in the setup of the version 3 with regards to the pin layout on the MCU that did cause issues on this. However, that has now been changed and it fully supports D-Shot with iNav as well. Also, there is better SD card compatibility now. It is fully supported on this compared to on the other one, which did have some limitations. Like many of the Speedy B stacks, this also has wireless connectivity built in. It has Bluetooth that allows you to do the configuration with the Speedy B app. And it also has that built in battery indicator down the side here, too. You can see the LEDs for that just down there. As this does have an SD card slot, there is no built-in black box storage, although you can simply put in an SD card, as you've seen. We do also have an analog OSD chip on here as well, so whilst it is fully digital compatible, you can still use it with analog too. It has a built-in barometer, support for LED strips, and has a power input range of 3 to 6S, and for the configuration, we've then got a USB-C port over here. 
It also has a 30.5 by 30.5 mounting pattern and you can see that the grommets come pre-installed from the factory as well. Now if we look around it you can see we have all of the pads at the top here for our connectivity however we also have some connectors down here we have an ESC connector with pads next to it too and we have another one over here which we'll take a bit of a closer look at but the chances are it'll be a digital connector for the likes of DJI 03 or any of the other digital FPV systems. Next, moving over to the ESC. Now, the first thing you'll see is that it is 55 amp rated. That is up 5 amp from the previous model. Now, there is some other changes on this with regards to the PCB and everything as well. They've now moved to a 3 ounce copper layer on the PCB compared to 2 ounce before. It has that aluminium heatsink on the top and it has a maximum burst current now of 70 amp at 10S compared to 55 amp at 5S on the previous version. Now it is obviously a 4-in-1 and you can see then on the back side we have some of the FETs listed as well as our drivers and our multi-controllers and as I've already mentioned it is based on BL Heli S rather than BL Heli 32. Now as I mentioned earlier they do include that low ESR capacitor which is 1000 UF in the pack. It supports 3 to 6S battery voltage input. Size wise again very similar to the flight controller 45.6 by 44 by 6.1 and it weighs 18.7 grams with the heatsink itself weighing 4.3 grams with the total weight coming in at 23.5. It supports all of the usual protocols D-Shot 300, 600 and is designed specifically for use with the SpeedyB stack. However, it doesn't mean you couldn't use it with any other stack if you just wanted to buy it as a standalone. Now, as I mentioned, the ESC is actually based on BL Heli S rather than BL Heli 32. Now, there are some reasons for that, largely being the fact that it is open source. However, that does mean it isn't compatible with bi-directional D-Shot. You can though flash this ESC with Blue Jay, which will give you bi-directional D-Shot support which means you do have all of those features that we've come to expect but it does come with BL Heli S out the factory. Now there is a reason why manufacturers are doing this and it's basically cost because BL Heli 32 is a licensable ESC firmware and as a result of that they're having to pay a license to the BL Heli 32 devs and that adds cost for the user whereas shipping it with BL Heli S means they don't have to do that but they then give you the option of installing Blue Jay if you want some of those newer additional features. Now putting the stack together is fairly straightforward we simply have the included harness which we're just going to plug into this connector back here making sure that we get it the right way around there we go and then we have the connector on the flight controller there as well so again we can simply plug that in there nope wrong way around making sure you actually get it right and then you can simply flip them over, back to back them, and then you can see we've then got the total stack. Now, just giving you an indication on the stack height, I'm going to do this roughly. However, what we're looking at here is about 16, 17 mil without compressing the isolators down. You can see there probably 17, 18 to the top of any of the components on the PCB. Now, just to give you a comparison compared to that last stack I reviewed here, you can see them side by side. There is a bit of a difference. Height-wise, actually, there isn't a lot in it, although this is a little bit shorter, but obviously size-wise, you can see things are quite dramatic. Both of these stacks are very capable. Both can do analog and digital FPV. Both have the OSD chip. Both have some extra filtering on the gyro as well, if I remember. But the real difference here is you're getting a much higher power stack specifically designed really for 5 inch and above compared to this one, which is okay up to 5 inch. And actually, I have run one of these. I have two of them on a 5 inch quad without too many issues. However, you do want something like this if you are going to be smashing it up regularly. Now, one of the big features on the SpeedyB stacks is the fact that they all have wireless connectivity. This allows you to not only configure them wirelessly, but also update the firmware as well, all via the SpeedyB app.
Now, in this video, I'm not going to go into that in too much depth. I've covered it several times already in my reviews of Speedy B Stacks. I'll put a link to the review of the mini stack below where I did go over it in more detail, but we will take just a quick look just to demonstrate it working, and then we'll get it under the microscope and take a look at the flight controller and the ESC in a bit more detail. Now, just to give you an overview of the app with this flight controller, you can see it's powered up and you can actually see the battery level indication that is built into the flight controller there as well. You've got those four LEDs. It's a nice quick indication of what your battery is like. So when you're plugging in before takeoff, rather than having to look at the OSD, you can instantly see on the side of the flight controller what the state is. We've now connected it to the app and you can see it's been picked up. So if I click connect, we'll give it a second. You can then see it's asking for a password. I'm simply going to set this as all zeros. And then in a moment, it connects. Now, this gives you pretty much all of the main functionality that you find in beta flight. So for instance, you can see it's given us the status, calibration, down here, it's telling us some things that are going on. So we've got MSP connection, as well as no valid receiver detected. And then we've got some options along the top here. So you can see it's telling us the gyro, the accelerometer, and the barrow has been picked up. And then you've got the option down here to enter expert mode that brings you into that more traditional look like we've seen on the Speedy B app before, giving us all of the usual controls over beta flight. In here, you can see you've got the main screen, which tells us there. We can then go down to ports and do all the configuration there. We have the main configuration options, again, allowing us to turn on and off some of the sensors, exactly the same as you find in the configuration screen in beta flight. We've got the battery, the fail safe settings, the presets option, which still works as well on the SpeedyB app. You've then got your PID tuning screen, your RC screen, and again, all of the main functionality that you would find in Betaflight located here on the app without having to connect any wires. You can do it nice, quick, and easily in the field. Personally, I don't do my main configuration this way. I still prefer to connect it to Betaflight Configurator via USB, but for being able to change things and tweak things in the field, this is absolutely fantastic. Now, you can also do the configuration for the ESC under the SpeedyB app as well. Here you can see I've connected it and we've now got all of the main options showing. We can even do things like a motor test under here as well. Again, all via that built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity that SpeedyB include. So just to take a look at this flight controller under our microscope, as well as point out a few interesting things. So we have the STM32F405 here in the middle. Next to this on the left hand side, you have this little component here with the hole in it. That is our barrow sensor. So if you're going to conformal coat this flight controller, that is the component you're going to want to avoid or at least tape up and make sure that you don't completely cover it. If we move around and look at the top, we've got our USB-C port up here. Moving along, we've got our sensor. You can see we've got LEDs telling us that there's power. We've got our gyro over here. We've then got some filtering. We've got capacitors as well as more capacitance and an IC down here. And then we've got our first big beck located down the bottom here, the main voltage IC, as well as the coil, and then all of the filtering around that. Then we have an ESP32. This is what gives us our wireless connectivity. We've got a little C3 wireless antenna over here, and then the ESP. This is the same chipset that you'll find in the lights of Express LRS, and this is what allows you to connect your flight controller to the SpeedyB app. There's a crystal there for that. There's also a crystal there for the STM32F405 as well. Flipping the board over to the other side, we have another voltage regulator. So again, our coil, our capacitance, as well as our chip. We've then got our port for our ESC, more sensors over here. Interestingly, that does look a little bit like a gyro sensor. It probably isn't, but it does look a little bit like one. We've got some more, most likely voltage regulation here, RSD card slot, and then moving down to the bottom of the board, we've got our UART connection for our plug and play for DJI 03. Interesting, they label it DJI plug and play O3 link and Vista ear unit into there. And you can see that they even print on the, the pin layout along the top. So nine volt ground T1, T2 ground and S bus, as well as UART1 
for the OSD and you are two for the receiver based on that pin input. Moving up to the middle area on the bottom of the board, we then have our AT7456E, which is our typical analog OSD chip, which means you can use this with analog OSD no problem at all. Flipping over to the ESC, now I'll be honest, on this side, there really is bugger all to show you because it's covered in the heatsink. But if we spin it over, we can just take a closer look. We've got some of our Fortier ICs here. We've got our FD6288Os. And then we've got some driver ICs here in the middle and then FETs around the side, which do look to be that 40 years as well. Is that the same logo? No, it isn't. But the FETs on this are G011N04s. And you can see they're located all around the board there. Pretty much everything on this is fairly normal. There's nothing particularly unusual on this side of the board at all. We've then Got a nice big protection diode here included with the ESC. And overall, that should offer plenty of protection for the rest of the circuitry as well. When you look at the ESC, this circuitry is actually on a separate board, which is soldered to the main board. And really, on this side of things, there's not a lot more to show you than that. Okay, now just to be clear on a few things, SpeedyB did send me this stack over for free. However, I've not been paid to make this video and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. I haven't flown this stack, so as I've said already, this isn't a review more than anything, it's an overview. I can't fly every single stack I'm sent, it simply just isn't realistic and as a result of that, I separate off what is a proper review, telling you my thoughts on what I think of its performance and what is an overview like this video is today. I don't envisage any problems with this stack. There is no question the version 3 did have a few quirks with regards to that OSD and using the black box on iNav. However, it is fine as far as I can tell on this one now with the improvements that they've made. And SpeedyB really have been smashing it out of the park in recent times with regards to the quality of their flight controllers, but also the price point and features as well. You've got that higher capacity ESC, wireless connectivity, and overall, what is not to like. Now, if you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to this in the description on the SpeedyB website. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this stack is available for under $70. Here is the SpeedyB website, and whilst I don't have a link directly to the page I can show you, that link is in the description. SpeedyB are really smashing it out of the park right now with the quality of their products, but also the price point. And frankly, getting a full stack here for under $70 is really going to be pushing other manufacturers harder than we've seen before and it's going to be a very very popular option for people not only in budget builds but any build where they want all of that additional wireless connectivity as well. Furthermore, I just want to say if you have found this video interesting, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. Any questions, put it in there as well. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to give it a like as well. Finally, if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. It's only through the support of my Patreons am I able to keep making content on this channel, and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep doing this in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it for me on this one. If you're interested in seeing the review on the mini stack, there is a link to that in the description as well. Stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.